my tits up. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> so you don't get that white spot underneath. But uh, I know you wouldn't know anything about that. But uh, they might. I talk so much about fucking spray tan and titties. These guys are like. But For cis straight men, they know the community and drag queen fucking talk. We're familiar. Hey, it's Michaela Gordon, and welcome to So Funny It Hurts, where we talk to your favorite comedians and explore the trauma that made them that way. Now, I'm so excited about our guest. Honestly, I feel like I get some of my best life advice from barber turned inspirational speech giver with a fucky twist because she'll drag your ass for filth. <laughs> Please welcome Jesse Lawless to So Funny It Hurts. Hi, Jesse. Thank you for having me, Michaela. Thank you for coming. I feel so excited that you're here because I feel like you've been yelling at me for two years. <laughs> and now I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to talk. Yeah, How's I've it got going? Some singers, huh? Yeah, but I love it because it's crazy. You are a barber, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And a, not only a really great barber, but you've done so many free haircuts over the years uh, for people who've needed it. And then TikTok kind of came and you have this like zero bullshit approach, which I think in a time of cancel culture, it's so refreshing. Oh, it's scary. Is it? It's a little because like with I never know which video people are going to lose their shit about because like I I. I posted something the other day that I was like, oh, this one could be, this could be one of those. Wait, what was it? Uh, I get a lot of, I get a lot of comments uh, about how pale I am, especially if I wear shorts. You can see how white I am. But somebody's always like, girl, you need a tan. Like, oh my God, you're so white. And in the video, I said, I'd like to challenge you to go find your nearest black person and tell them that they should consider some skin bleaching or maybe stay out of the sun because they're getting too brown. And just come back. Let me know how that goes. Yeah. And I got so much support on that video from uh, everyone, people of color or white people. Uh, yeah. Everybody was like, you know, but that's you're such a weird thing to say. Like, it is. It's so disrespectful. I, you know, I am white. It's like, it's people are like, you're so white. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm white. Well, I am. I'm from, like, my heritage. I'm Irish and Scottish. Like, what do you want from me, dude? I'm either going to be red or white. <laughs> it's on your own Listen, when I don't have this spray tan, I'm Italian and Russian. I'm either, like, white as a fucking ghost. Or if I do go in the sun, then I'll get dark. But I won't go in the sun anymore because after 35, bitch, catch me never in the sun. <laughs> so I get these spray tans. Yeah. But I would never go up to somebody and be like, Sorry, just you're so white. Talk about the color of their skin, but I mean, I don't know. Uh, I had a situation when I was in high school where I, that was like the the bane of my existence, like my my how white my legs are. And you got you got this little friend group, and everybody wants to dress like each other. And all my friends are like, "We're wearing our white shorts tonight with our black tank tops." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> and then we go out to the football game, and football in the South is. Everyone, like the okay, whole wait. So, there. for people that don't know, you're from because you have an accent, yeah, you're from up, Alabama until I was 18 years old, and then I was escaped, <laughs> which is crazy because I do want to talk about because I think you're really funny, thank you, and I think that I, I, I love your approach to life, and I think that's why you've got two million followers. Obviously, they love you too 1.5, but who's counting? You know, we'll go for two, like, we let's manifest, that. let's manifest. Yeah, let's fucking manifest Let's that. do it. You will. You will. But 1.5, that's crazy. That's a lot. That's a huge audience. But I want to talk about, like, being a woman in Alabama, being in the community coming from Alabama. Like, there's a lot to unpack there. Oh, man. Is that what made you so funny and strong? Oh, uh, absolutely. The trauma makes you funny. That's, right? That's, that's it right there. Like, I was not this funny as a child. I just progressively <laughs> got more and more traumatized and more and more funny. So, <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, every comedian that I have, this is how it's, I was like, I can go to therapy or I can start a podcast. And I was like, right. okay, I'll do both. Yeah. <laughs> but this is how it started. I, I always feel like someone was like, oh, you're so funny. And I was like, thanks. It's all the trauma. Yeah. And I think that's where we get our best material. Growing up for you, let's just get into it. You grew up in Alabama. Are you an only child? Mostly. Okay. So, so half brothers, sisters. I'll try to. My dad didn't know he had a daughter till I was 14. And then. Um, about a year after that, my stepmom decided that she needed a child with my dad. So 
now now I'm not an only child. I was kind of mad about that. I'm like, I just fucking got this guy. Like, can I have some time with him before you bring a fucking infant into the picture? Yeah. But, you know, I love my brother. He's awesome. He's super awesome. I, um, I'm i so happy that he did come along. But How old is he now? Pissed off about it back then. Uh, James is 22, 23. Oh my God. God, he's getting old. Yeah, that's but, crazy. Yeah. I remember my dad... My trauma is my dad and mom got divorced and then my dad kind of started a new, like he just left and started a new family and he had a little girl and I mean, I couldn't deal with it. And then when we, we only started speaking two years ago, we went into therapy. You feel like that love's being taken away from you. Yeah, I I feel like I didn't have it to begin with and then it was going elsewhere and I, uh, he, now he's my best friend. We've right. made up, but you I feel, like feel that's that love it's that crazy. You're giving love to someone when you could be giving that love to me. Like yeah. you're just that should be mine. Totally, that's how I <laughs> felt. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how we feel as children. You know, we're we're vulnerable and and we don't understand emotion. Yeah. Uh, until your frontal lobe is developed, I don't think any of us, and even afterwards, uh, we still struggle to understand our emotions. Uh, my one of my last therapists had me watch the movie Inside Out. It's a it's a cartoon movie. It's a Pixar movie, and it's just all these little characters uh, representing your emotions. And it's it's actually a really good movie. And it it did a lot for like my okay. This is how I compartmentalize. I love that. Listen, those Pixar movies are lit. I take my seven year old <laughs> niece. I was crying at um what's what's the movie Coco. Uh, it's Coco. Coco. I think it's Coco. C O C O. Ah, my niece was like, "Okay, let's go." And I was like, oh, "Okay, yeah. let's go, to <laughs> It's so <laughs> beautiful. I yeah, love that. In the fields. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. All right. So that's so you had your dad, and then you have your younger brother, and right. I didn't really the sister. There was no sisters. Oh, there was no sisters. No sisters. No. Uh, my mom raised me by herself. Um, until I was, well, really even after that, when I met my dad when I was 14, I went down to Florida and visited him. He put himself in as much into my life as he could. I even moved to Florida for a little while. Um, and my mother and father just did not get along at all. And my dad was paying for everything. My, I grew up very poor. Like when I say poor, like my mother didn't have a job and I feel like a, a lot of her friends, the church, uh, my aunt, uh, did a lot to just kind of make sure that things were okay that you know I had food and we had clothes I got a lot of my cousins hand-me-downs and stuff and I'm thankful for that I'm thankful for uh, growing up in a little bit of a struggle because I can really appreciate where I'm at in life now I mean shit like I'm by no means rich but from the standards that I had as a child like I'm fucking loaded right now bro and I'm looking at me like I am the hero that I needed when I was a kid so um yeah Janet Janet did her on her own the best she could, and uh, I was a firecracker, so a lot of her not having a job was because she was constantly having to be up at the school because I was in trouble, because I was getting detention, because I was getting Aww. suspended, because I was in a fight, because somebody said the wrong thing to me, and I did the wrong thing back. <laughs> so Yeah, you were a fighter. I had to be. Yeah, I listen, I feel that deeply. I feel like I've been living in survival mode up until maybe last year. We're still trying to get out of it. <laughs> but when did, between the fighting, when did you realize humor could get you out of trouble and you sort of started leaning on that? When I made my mom laugh when I was in trouble. I'll tell you what, it's always making the mom laugh. I swear like, to God, every comedian. For sure, like being in trouble. I think I told her one time, she was just like, popping off and I remember being in the car and like I looked over and saw some cows and I don't know what the fuck I was thinking but I just pulled something straight out of my ass and like with the most serious face possible I looked at my mom I was like well if we could keep your cows out of the roads your chickens went and shit all over everything (laughs) she she stopped what she was doing she's like are you okay? <laughs> started laughing. It was over. I was like, you don't remember what you're mad about. Uh huh. <laughs> That's when it all started. Yeah. Just when I figured out that I could make my mom laugh. Yeah. And that would get me out of trouble. Yeah. That's crazy. Because she didn't remember why she was mad. <laughs> so what kind of trouble did Jesse Lawless get into growing up? Oh my God. What was God. going on? A lot of weird shit, honestly. Like I was either getting into a fight because somebody I got made fun of for being poor cuz I never had the cool shoes. Did you shoes. get made fun of or you bullied? Oh, like I never had the cool shoes, I never had the cool clothes. That's why I'm so obsessed with shoes now. I'm buying shoes for kids and stuff is because like Yeah, you give back to kids a lot. I never had that. 
I never, I never had the the cool shit. Well, when I met my dad, it's like a Cinderella story. Like I grew up so fucking poor, and then my dad was a millionaire when I met him. Like I had to reach out and find him and like hunt him down, and it was like the biggest like kind of Cinderella story that I, I could even kept, like put together in my head. Like wait, my dad's a million. I'm so poor, and my dad's a million. That's crazy. Yeah, he Jesse. took me like on this crazy shopping spree and bought me a bunch of really nice clothes and stuff. And then all of a sudden, like I was one of the best dressed kids in the school when I looked like you know everything I had come from like a donation center. Wait, how Before old were you? 14. 14 when that, and that's like prime middle pivotal. school freshman. Mm-hmm. That's so. How'd you find him? You were like, was it you that reached out to him? I had ran away from home a lot of times. My mom was. Uh, my mom almost died when I was a child, like to the point where they were like getting paperwork together for me to be my my aunt to take me, and. I don't know if you've ever heard of Jesse Duplantis, but he's a preacher. I'm I'm on a different level with like the universe and God and like how I perceive all that. And it's certainly not like what I grew up with, but my mom was incredibly religious. I, I watched her go to a church. I watched the man lay hands on her. She wasn't she could she couldn't even walk by herself. Like they had to like assist her into the church. And my aunt was just crazy. She spent her whole life either in mental institutions or just like deep throat in a bottle of vodka. Like just crazy as fuck. And then she's like, Janet, you got to go to this church. Like my mom's dying. And my mom's like, and what was the illness? What was she dying? Her, from? her white blood cell count was through the roof and they were thinking leukemia. So. And how old were you? I was like five, six. So they take my mom to this church and this man comes down and starts like preaching at her and like pointing like the Lord's going to do a work in you tonight and, like, tells her to stand up. She stands up. He puts his hands on her and starts, ah, la 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 And next thing you know, mom fucking passes out. And I was like, ha, he killed her. What's it? That, yeah. There she goes. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and, and the preacher's saying, like, everybody believe, everybody pray, everybody believe, everybody pray. And my mom got up and started running up and down. The, no. The, yeah. No. It worked. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know what? Every, like, I felt like my whole life that because of that moment, I had to believe in God because he had shown himself to me and like so blatantly. But I believe in the universe and that is my God. There's a part of the Bible that I really, truly believe in. And it says God is love. And that is my God. Love is my God. So that can be my God. But I don't believe in some dude in the sky, some fairy sky daddy with streets of gold. And I don't believe in a fucking evil red guy with horns and a tail. You know, yeah. I believe that, you know, the universe and um, and karma is God and, and mm-hmm. they will fuck you up. <laughs> Wait, that's so crazy to me, though, because, listen, we everybody knows the South is crazy with the pastors and and churches and all of that. I believe in manifestation. That. Absolutely. But that is wild. Yeah, they, it was a they super They saved church. your mom's life. It was a super church. And there was like literally like probably over a thousand people in the building. And when you have that many people like focusing their energy because it's all about energy like I'm such a big I've created my life like I've just painted this picture in my head and I created this like I am where I'm at because I wanted to be here and that showed me that I could do it because when you can put enough energy in one direction you can paint your life to be whatever you want it to be and all of those people were putting all of their energy into my mother being healed and they manifested it they made it happen. And you can ask any metaphysicist out there, like, that's the recipe recipe for success. Having that many people put that much energy I mean, but them. obviously it is, and it's something that's worked in your life. Because seeing where you are now, hearing a little bit of where you came from, and then seeing how you've created your life. I mean, listen, it's obvious you're killing it on social media. You just got married to everyone's dream girl, by the way, Jenna fucking Jameson. Are you kidding me? She's the baddest of all time. And I want to talk about how, because you just got married and congratulations, so such a big deal. But you've really created such an amazing life for yourself. And I, I think that's what's so special, like really to come from nothing. It's you created your own Cinderella story and you did it a lot with a lot of chutzpah and a lot of humor. I mean, that's amazing. Um, You got to laugh at yourself or everybody else is going to. If you're laughing at yourself and it kind of takes everybody else's thunder away, if they're trying to laugh at you, it's like Eminem, you know, an eight mile when he went up on stage and roasted himself like what? What else are you going to say? So Truly. that was like, that was kind of the direction that that was the first step I took in that direction was just kind of like making fun of myself and 
everybody thought that was funny, and instead of laughing at me, they were laughing with me. So check, I know I feel checkmate, like motherfucker. Listen, I feel like that's why the advice that you give is so great too, though, because you do take the piss out of everything. Yeah. And I think that people that don't know how to stand up for themselves um, need that. Like they need to know that if they say it first. Then it's funny. Then we can all laugh. And then you're not the butt of the joke, which right. for people who've been bullied or grew up poor. Well, I think important. that a lot of that has to do with um, looking in the mirror and, and seeing who you are and and admitting to yourself who you are and embracing everything about yourself, your flaws, you know, your shortcomings, your insecurities. It's it's about really, truly, and as gay as it sounds, it's about loving yourself, man. Um, and when you truly love yourself, you, you glow different. Yeah. You do. All right. So what happens? So you get out of high school and you're like, I want to go to barber school. I got kicked out of high school. Good for you. <laughs> I am we proud of it. Fucking I rebels it. around here. Oh, man. Uh, I got into a fight on a bus and the bus driver came to separate us. And I. Okay, you kicked his ass too. No, I knocked her straight out. I didn't even mean to. She was an older lady. I feel terrible for it. Yeah, she. I. We were on. We were beating the shit out of each other. We ended up like kicking away from each other and she I was getting ready to knock this bitch's head off and the bus driver got right in the middle and I knocked her out so I got uh I got kicked out of the entire school system for assault and battery upon a board employee oh my god well it's good to know that you can still beat people's asses if you need we're safe here everybody boys <laughs> I didn't, I didn't. you won't need to do shit in this podcast studio if anything goes down she'll kick their ass or shoot them so we're good don't, i feel super safe don't fucking worry okay um okay so then at what point do you go to barber school it's like that you're like i'm gonna oh, go man, there's so much to happen between because you're an incredible barber oh my goodness from that point okay so my mom as i mentioned like she never had a job she did hair on like the side, like she did. Oh, like, your mama did hair. She did like my cousins and my aunts and uncles and like her friends and stuff. And I watched her. I'm a very visual learner. I watched her uh, do this shit for so long. I was finally like, I can do that. I want to do it, mom. And she was like, anything I ever wanted to do, which it's super fucking dangerous for a parent to be like that. But I'm glad she did because she gave me a lot of opportunity to fuck up and learn from it. <laughs> but best. anything I wanted to do, Janet was like, okay. You can do it. Where's right. Janet now? Janet's in Alabama. You still talk to Janet? I we, you know, I want to talk to her more. Uh, my mother and I have an interesting relationship. We love each other very much. As I mentioned, religion is a very, very, very big part of her life, and we <clears throat> don't really see things through the same window. You know, uh, I is think, it because of your lifestyle? Well, yeah. My mother wanted. Um, a little girl, you know, I was in beauty pageants and stuff when I was a kid because, like, she loved, she wanted a little girl that she could dress up and and, and take with her. Wait, to do. I gotta see Jesse Lawless in a beauty pageant. You want to see? You yeah, see I do. Pageant? Let me see this fucking photo one. right yeah. now. Jesus yes, God, so funny. the makeup is the best because my face is like this weird shade of like an orangey brown. And then you got your little baby my, white skin. My body's white. <laughs> <laughs> it was giving oh. toddlers and tiaras 80s oh, edition. Oh, so bad. All Listen, right, I did pageants tiny. growing up. I grew up in Vegas and I did beauty pageants and my mother did not want me in. Nobody wanted me in them. And I was like, I'm going to be in okay. beauty pageants. And I this signed is, myself up. Here's a couple. I got a little reel for you. We'll start with uh, the first day that I met my father. I'm a clone. So hold it up to the camera. I'll zoom oh in. Oh my god! Look at oh my god! You guys literally look exactly alike. We're we're clones. Can you close up on this? Uh, put it to your camera. Oh my god! You and your dad. This is the when you met. Yeah, it's the first day we ever met. Oh my god! Did you guys look just alike? Uh, we walk the same. We talk the same. I've got my teeth done since then, but like we, I know your teeth look so good, babe. We we have the exact same crooked teeth on the bottom, like mirror image. I'm a clone. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Uh, but is his hair red? Yeah, yeah. He's a gen not anymore. He's a he's a silver fox. Ooh. Well, he's, he's not as. Oh, here you go. You ready? Yes. <laughs> This is going to be the cover photo. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> I love it. You're welcome. You're welcome. God, those fucking dresses. I swear Listen. to God. Oh, my God. Okay, are you ready? Listen, this is going up. 
<laughs> Toddlers and tiaras, take a good no, look. Can, can we? No, notice the color difference in my face and the rest of my body. Okay, this. Can I borrow that dress? That might still fit, and I got a singing <laughs> kick next week. <laughs> I love it. Look at your curly ass oh hair. Oh my gosh! Listen, my mom gave me a perm every chance she got. Okay, so that just like were you like I'm so not it's into this, or did real. were you kind I'm of into like, it? Pictures from my childhood between my mother and my dad. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Yeah, there's baby Jesse. Oh my god, let me see. <laughs> I feel like it helps to get a good visual. Oh my god, you're so little. Look at that ginger hair, dude. Oh yeah, I'm a ginger. A ginger. Ginger ninja. Look at this. The hand. Can you just give us? Can you just do the same pose right now at your age right now? Just do it. Give the same pose. <laughs> it's the same person. <laughs> Oh, okay. I love it, dude. Oh, enough of baby Jesse. All right, so you did the pageant. So religion has been the thing that is kind of in between you and your mom's relationship right now? Um, It's always presented some issues, for sure. Um, I would never say, you know, I would never, I would never say anything bad about my mom. We just don't, we just don't see life the same way, uh, we we get along really well sometimes. Like there's when we me and my mom are either gonna get along a ten or we're gonna or we're gonna fight all the way to a ten. And there's not much in between. Um, but the good times are good. I feel like that's such a common mother daughter dynamic. I don't speak to my mom now. I actually have this amazing woman that like adopted me. Um, 10 years ago and that is my mom she's and she is from the south and she's like the bomb but my mom mom um she's there's so many issues there but i think that when you love you like love 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 and when you fight it's like so so crazy and if they're not willing to get for me my situation is different my mom was an addict yeah it's very difficult to overcome that yeah, that's and hard. at some point i had to make the decision that was like i can't have that in my life i feel like my mom's an addict but for jesus <laughs> you know like that's an addiction my, it's like you don't have to be a, if a my mom alcohol. could like shoot jesus straight into her veins <laughs> Wait, that's my favorite soundbite ever. If my mom could shoot Jesus straight into her veins. She would. Can we get an IV for Jesus? <laughs> we, one Jesus IV, please. <laughs> IV therapy's really in right now, so. Oh, man. But, yeah, that's been that's been the thing. But I love her, and I know that she means well, and I know that we believe a very similar structure. You know, the, the structure is there, like, positivity you know that's why I like I, I understand Christians like I understand their uh their view of things because mine is very similar now it's the it's not Christians that I have any problem with it's the fucking bible I mean for fuck's sake uh, God told Abraham to chop his fucking son up what would we do with someone that said hey I was gonna take my kid to the top of this mountain and chop him up but the voices in my head said not to Right. What would we do to Abraham yeah. in 2023, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm Italian Catholic, and so it was very religious in our home as well. I know for me being gay, thankfully, like my grandma was really cool with me being gay. Oh, she that's didn't cool. care. I know, and that's all I cared about. My grandma Vivian was oh, that's sweet. the fucking best. And I, the way I came out to my grandma, she was very very Italian, very Catholic, Eucharistic yeah, minister, psycho. She would have taken the IV for Jesus too yeah. if it was offered. <laughs> it was banging. But when I came out to her, I was like, oh my God, she's going to like not be good. And I was like, I'm in love with somebody. And she was like, what's his name? And I was like, Lisa. <laughs> and she was like, uh-huh. And then we just sat there and she said, okay, let's go to JC Penny." Which, do you know J.C. Penny? Did you have it? Okay. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, girl, this is not the time for the mall, honey. Yeah, like, we're what? Shopping. We're going to shop the gay Yeah, way. we like, did. So we went to J.C. Penny and she bought a crucifix. And then she told me to bring Lisa over. 
And the next time I went over, she had the crucifix blessed by the priest and gave it to Lisa. And that was her way of saying, oh like, my God, like, you're welcome into our family, like, which was I, a big deal for I her. I bless this. Uh -huh, she did. Oh, my God, I love that. How yeah, sweet. it was the best. And she died That's a awesome. few years ago. But it was it was so good to have that moment with her. Her being so religious and me being gay and having those two worlds you know, come together. I'm very grateful for. I also have a lot of barbers in my family. I also have a lot of vets in my family. And you served, didn't you? That was like part of the journey to being a barber. Yeah, um, that's great. When did you serve? And also thank you for your services, oh, truly. Thank you for supporting your military. Um, yeah, oh my God, in every way, of course. I, uh, I wanted to join. Actually, I, I went to the, as I mentioned, I ran away a lot when I was a kid and I had been, I had ran away. I was 17. I think that I was on probation. Um, and that was when the towers got hit and I was in a trailer. Um, I was going to shoot up for the first time. I never, I was doing crystal meth. I was snorting fucking anything I could put up my nose. Um, I would have eaten a cat turd. He told me to get me high. I was fucked up <laughs> and I was going to shoot up that night and I watched my buddy do it for the first time. And he just fucking, you know, I, mean, I don't know if you know what it looks like, but I, it's scary. It's scary watching that happen, and I, I, I spooked out, man. I couldn't do it. I, I went to the next door neighbor who was like this older dude that had a bunch of like whiskey and pills and shit. And I shouldn't have been there either, but he was cool. Uh, I didn't <laughs> shoot up over there, so I went over there and I think I smoked some weed with him or something and snorted some pills and passed out on his couch and woke up the next morning. And he handed me a joint right when I woke up and I was watching the TV. I was like, what movie is this? And he was like, that's the news. And I was like, shit, what the fuck? I called my mom and I was like, what the fuck's going on? She was like, we're probably going to war. I was like, well, she was like, where are you at? I was like, I'll tell you where I'm at if you promise to take me to the recruiter station. She was like, are you fucking crazy? No. I'm sure she didn't say fucking because she's a uh -huh. woman of God. But uh -huh. she was like, are you in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. <laughs> but yeah. um, I, I talked her into it. We went back and forth for a minute, and she finally promised that she would take me to the recruiter station. Oof. So she took me to the recruiter station. I was 17 years old, so um, they just gave me the practice ASVAB. And when I I'm surprisingly pretty intelligent. Um, I took the practice ASVAB and just whooped its ass, and they came out, and they were like, Miss Lawless, your daughter can do pretty much anything she wants to do in the military. And uh, we're going to need you to sign some paperwork because she's only 17 years old so that we can, you know, recruit her. And my mom said, I promised to take you to the recruiter station. I didn't promise to sign anything. I was mad as fuck. Janet! I ran, I ran away like six hours later. I was back free basing crystal meth off of some fucking tinfoil with a big pen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh but at the same time, it's like, maybe she saved my life. Who knows? Who knows what would have happened? But I did end up uh, joining the military when I was 21. Wow. And um, my, I didn't have the most illustrious career in the military. I was a shithead. I was a really good soldier. I was really strong. I was really good at all the physical part of it. Right. But it was really hard for me to wrap my head around answering to people that had an IQ like 20 fucking points lower than me. Um, so that was hard. That was hard for me. The yeah. mental game was challenging. I've heard them. My brother uh, just, we just got my brother from, I call it army school because I'm <laughs> fucking, I'm an idiot. Basic what is it? Basic training. That's what or it is. If it's school, it's AFP. No, no. Basic training. Okay, That's what right. it's called. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're like, did your family fucking serve you, idiot? <laughs> um, but I, he said it was really, it, it was intense. And my sister-in-law who I call my sister, she served, of course. They're married, so he wanted to do that. And uh, they say it's really the mental game. It's very difficult. I felt like basic was a fucking cakewalk. Anybody out there like Yeah, for... well, we haven't met my fucking brother. And okay? I went He's... to basic. Shit. How old am I? I'm 40. Are so... you 40? Yeah, I'm 40. Oh, this Vegas heat is doing just fine on that skin, honey. <laughs> I'm using a lot of lotion. Yeah. All right, it puts the lotion on its skin. Um, <laughs> I, uh... I finally, you know, when I when I got in, I basic was a cakewalk. And anybody who says basic is not a cakewalk, you shouldn't have went to fucking basic. You should, never should have been listening because that was easy as fucking pie to me. What was hard was getting into garrison when um, it was time to like really do my job. And all of my equipment had because I was supposed to go to Taji. We were we were scheduled to ship right out to Iraq. I was only going to be in Fort Hood for. 
Mm -mm. like fucking four or five months at the most. I think it was like maybe even three. I don't remember. It's been fucking 19 years. So um, all my shit was over in Iraq, all my equipment. So guess what they had me do? Fucking clean up grease spots off the motor pool floor. And I'm like, motherfucker, I didn't graduate third in my class in AIT. I would have graduated first if I, I listen. I what up. happened? Take, what happened? You punched the a, bus driver out? No, but I was really fucking cocky <laughs> with the instructor and he already didn't like me. And then on our final test, even if I would, because they let you retake the test, if you fuck up and you if you, fix, if you pass it, you get a 70, you can't get a 100. Even if I would have got 70, I would have uh, graduated with honors. I would have graduated second. But he wouldn't let me retake. He let everybody else retake except for uh, me. Because I went up there cocky as fuck. Like, I can take accountability. I went up there cocky as fuck. Were you I cocky? Yeah, yeah, I was a quartermaster in chemical equipment repair. Pair, so I was working on. A, I don't even know what you just said. I don't oh, know what that is. I was what is that? A quartermaster in chemical equipment repair. Uh, I was working Sounds on a water intense. purification system, and um, I shocked myself. But that's why you love water. <laughs> You're the fucking water boy. I'm the water boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe. Wait, it. so you shocked um, yourself? Yeah, I shocked myself. It wasn't bad. They had these machines set up uh, in training so that you can't, you know, you're not gonna fucking shock yourself to death, but you're gonna feel it. You're gonna know you fucked up. So that got me, and um, he was like, "Lawless fell," and I was like, "So I get to retake after everybody?" He was like, "No, mm -mm. you mother, I couldn't find him or nothing. I was so mad." Yeah, but I ended up graduating third in my class, and I was uh, really pissed off. Like I didn't graduate third in my fucking AIT class to be out here cleaning up grease spots off your motor motor pool floor, you fucking dimwit. Yeah, and I can't say that shit. I said it though. I said a lot of that shit, and that's why. I, I got like two or three Article 15s. I showed up to formation drunk twice. And um, I ended up, I just now found out, listen, I got so fucked up when I was going through all that. Like I was so mentally fucked up and also intoxicated uh, via Jack Daniels. <laughs> um, I, uh, I didn't know until recently that my discharge was for don't ask, don't tell. I had no fucking idea. I knew they got me out. I didn't remember what they got me out. I never went to the VA. I never, I was like, fuck you guys. Like, I don't need your, I can go make way more money on my own than I can collect from you guys. I'll get my own fucking doctors. You guys suck anyways. Um, I'm done hurry up and waiting. I'm done with that shit. So I was kind of like upset yeah. with the army. Um, I fucked up too. You know, I'm not going to sit here and act like it, showing up drunk to formation was okay twice. Uh, and they told me the first time, they was like, if you, come, if you do this shit again, we're going to take you straight to the MP station. And then I did it again, and they did exactly what they said they were going to do. Yeah. All right, so it's taken you a couple times to get it right. Yeah. But um, 2020 hits, the pandemic, and everyone's out of work. Barbers, fucking singers, DJs, yeah. everybody. I mean, literally, it's a very dark, scary time, and TikTok happens. And I feel like I feel like I've had to get so cool over the past couple of years because at first I was like, I think anyone over 30 was like, OK, tank tank. And then yeah. everybody who was cool and open to it really fucking got it right if they did. Mm -hmm. So how does it go down? Like you're like home, you're just chilling oh, and why? No, it was it was not chill at all. <laughs> the, the craziest thing happened. All right, um, take a sip of your water that you brought yourself because you needed it from the natural springs. I'm a water snob. <laughs> um, no, uh, I was doing hair and I had an assistant, um, and and they just told me I I needed to be on TikTok, um, and I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm like fucking 37 years old and I'm not downloading that shit on my phone. And they continued to uh, push me to do it, and I said, I, you know what? I tell you what. If you think my shit's that good, because they kept saying, you can go viral, you can go viral. Um, you really need to put your shit up like your shit's good. You can go, easily go viral. So I, I said, all right, if you want to make a TikTok and, like, use me as your muse, I'll be your content. But I'm not downloading it. And and they did. They made me a TikTok. And I've always been an asshole on the Internet. So I posted a, a photo of it. was It was Mark Zuckerberg, but it was Mark Zuckerberg's face on Hitler's body. <laughs> they took my whole ass Facebook down with no warning. They didn't say, don't do that again. They they gave me nowhere like nothing. Fuck. They were like, fuck you. That's that's 
that's Facebook Jesus. You can't do that. Yeah. So as soon as my uh, and it's I, I you know the thing I like most about you that I'm learning is how well you follow rules. Do you know what I'm saying? I just love how you just everything's by the book. It's with you. lawless. You know, I was born this way. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I named my podcast Born Lawless. I love it. I, I'm just like this, man. I love it. You know, it's uh, it is what it is. I was, like Lady Gaga, I was born this way, so you can't help it. Uh, yeah, I can't. I All cannot. right, so they download it. What video goes viral first? Um, it was a video that I had done this guy's hair, and he was like just silver fox, like solid head of like gray hair, and it was long. It was like down to his collarbones, and man, his beard was just wily, and and I just cleaned him up really well. I gave him a really nice undercut and a nice like pompadour on top, and. All the like middle-aged women were losing their shit. They're like, "Oh my god, he's so handsome!" Yeah. And it was just like hundreds of comments. And um, he and his wife had an absolute ball going through the comments. And uh, his daughters got in on it. They're like, "Listen, ladies, he has children, and they're, uh, they're reading these comments." Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's my buddy Chris. Shout out Chris. Uh, Shout but, out Chris, yeah, the Silver Fox. The Silver Fox, man. He. Uh, he was my first viral video. And then uh, when Facebook got completely taken down, that was when that happened. And my assistant said, hey, you're viral right now. I was like, well, I don't have any other fucking social media. And Facebook was how I used, that's how I marketed my business. Facebook is so easy to like target that hometown, like the people that you, that, that you see. The people that you actually encounter on a day to day basis. I don't fucking know anybody really from TikTok, but Facebook, I went to school half those motherfuckers. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. So, uh, that's my hometown. That's that's Coco. So um, when I lost Facebook, I was like, fuck. You were dude, stuck to do TikTok. How am I going to market myself? And, and I was viral on TikTok and I was like, all right. Here's the moment. What's the password? So they gave me the password and I, uh, I downloaded it, and somebody said something about my locks when I had dreadlocks. Yes, and, I loved the dreadlocks. And, like, no offense to, like, I know I know that there's so many things that I get wrong, and I just want everybody to know that I don't fucking mean to. Like, some people take offense to locks being called dread. Some people take offense to the word dreadlocks. Like, I ain't trying to upset nobody. I just liked the hairstyle, and it's I was uh, appreciating the simplicity and wonder that that is locks. I love them. I had them for seven years, and it was an excellent journey. I had a fantastic. Did you take a lot of slack for having dreadlocks? Oh, that's exactly like what happened. I was somebody said something about my locks, and I popped off at them, but just like gently. I called them pumpkin. I said, and it was the first time. Stop, and that's how pumpkin got started. It was started. the first time I ever said, hey, pumpkin. Okay, so if you haven't seen Jesse Lala's videos, will you give us, okay, I want to play a game with you. Like, maybe I'll give you two questions, like advice, and then you respond how you respond on TikTok. Uh, we'll see. All right. Okay, let's say, because oftentimes now people come to you for advice. They need you. They do. And you're like the people's therapist. You call them pumpkin. It makes them feel nice Yeah, and I tell special. people not to feel sorry for themselves because we've all got a sad story like at the end of the day most people don't give a fuck about yours when somebody says hey Michaela how you doing today they don't want to hear actually like your shit they don't want to hear wh why you're late for work or what's going on with your animals or they just want to hear I'm fine yeah and that's the easiest way to get through the day you know and that's the easiest way to keep people not being annoyed with you and it sucks because we do develop these relationships where we can say hey Michaela how are you doing and you know that I want to know how you're doing right but just generally speaking throughout the day you pass by somebody and you say hey how you doing how do you feel when they stop and they're like oh well you know my mom's going through some major health issues right now and my dog I got to take them to the vet and you're just like I'm really sorry like <laughs> fuck you just brought my mood down like i'm sorry that's happening to you but fuck man you're an emotional you know? dumper yeah like just don't do that to me all right my jacket off. so let's warm. say take your jacket off it's you know why it's the boys are are you guys warm too miguel are you dying a little bit yeah i know the boys want to kill me they we, uh, we before you got here i was like it's so freezing in here and they were like ma'am it's 70 and i was like i feel like i'm gonna die okay. yes and i did you turn it up chase did you make it warmer? I, I made it warmer, and we didn't turn it back down. 
What a little angel. But now everyone's in a little sweat box. Okay, my t-shirt's like a sweater Stop, t-shirt. are you sweating? Um, uh, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It really I is my fault. I'm going to be honest with jacket. you. I can't blame you. Well, me. it would have been so fitting 15 minutes ago style. before I made the boys. <laughs> Turn it down. Okay, so let's say I come. Uh, someone will write to you. Okay. Um, hey, Jesse. I'm feeling really sad. I feel like me and my best friend are at odds, and I feel like she doesn't want to be friends anymore. What do you think? You're going to get a lot more pain from holding on to something that's not for you than you're going to get from letting go. And letting go sucks. We all know letting go sucks. But um, sometimes the universe is trying to get somebody out of your life for a reason, and you the universe knows shit that you don't know. So stop trying to fight the universe and let it do its fucking thing. Punkin. <laughs> <laughs> I love your advice. I think it's great. Okay, I want to play this game with you because my favorite thing about you is this Southern drawl and I'm obsessed with it. Oh, not my fiance literally texting me things to tell you, but I didn't look at my phone. <laughs> um, my fiance loves you, by the way. Oh, that's awesome. Thank and you. And hopefully you'll meet her. And then I want to talk about your uh, wife. So, okay, I'm going to give you um, Southern phrases. Now I want you to tell us what the fuck they mean. <laughs> All right, I got this. Okay, you feel good about this? Oh, I we feel, feel great good. About it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, <clears throat> she's pitching a hissy fit with a tail on it. Oh, she's popping off. She's upset. You did something to piss her off, and you better watch the fuck out because the next thing you say could be fucking hellfire. <laughs> Okay, okay, can you just translate what you also just said? Oh. Hellfire! <laughs> it's hellfire! It's a different level of fire. It's like the hellfire. It's <laughs> okay. more intense fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Worthless is gum on a boot heel. Oh, that's just a pain in your ass, you know? <laughs> You're not just worthless. Like, you're causing me issues. <laughs> like, <laughs> you got to go. You're done. <laughs> you got to fucking go. Okay. I've been running all over Hell's Half Acre. Uh, I've had a lot to do today. Chores have got me overrun. I've had to go to the post office, the grocery store. I've had to pick the kids up from soccer practice. <laughs> it's too much. We don't have soccer practice in the South. They're playing football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That goddamn half acre. All right. She has her nose so high in the air she could drown in a rainstorm. Snobby bitch. That just you bitch. snobby, just self-absorbed, think you're better than everybody else, asshole bitch. <laughs> Not an asshole bitch. Yeah. That she's a real asshole bitch then. <laughs> He's so cheap he wouldn't give a nickel to see Jesus riding a bicycle. That was pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> okay, Listen, was this man's sad. not paying the bill, baby. You better get your card out. Um, okay, this one I thought was actually funny. I'm so poor, I can't afford to pay attention. Yeah, that's how I grew up. Yeah, that's how you grew up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end that's on that. <laughs> excellent description of my childhood right there. <laughs> Listen, I think it's so endearing. I think that's why people love you so much. I think you have such a great grasp on... Being really fun-loving, being super down-to-earth, you relate so well to the people that grew up like us. That's why I liked you. I was like, I love that she's, like, cool now, but she had a, you know, uh, she grew up poor. I did, too. I wasn't cool. I wasn't cool, and I was, like, actually not cool. It wasn't like, oh, poor Jesse got bullied. No, I just wasn't fucking cool. I was annoying. I wanted attention so bad. Like, I wanted to be a star. I've been practicing my autograph since I could write in cursive. Okay, I wanted this so fucking bad. Um, I was just annoying, and I was always trying to be the center of attention. And it's like I was funny enough, but not funny enough to just steal the show. And you know those people. Yeah. You know those people. Yeah, of course. I was one of those people. Of course. And one day I had to be like, and I lied a lot. I just would make Did shit. Did you lie a lot? Oh, yeah. I'd just make shit up. And that's hard. That was really hard for me to, like, face that was hard for me to see in myself and be like I am a fucking liar like I am so not cool that like I have to make things up to try to make myself sound cool and then one day I was like man fuck this shit like I'm just gonna do cool shit 
Like, that's how you do it. If you want to be cool, go do cool shit. Yeah, but also the (laughs) self-awareness to be even sitting here right now. I think that's the most surprising thing um, I'm experiencing in this moment. Like, you're really fucking self-aware. And to even be like, I lied a lot and I needed a lot of attention and I didn't want to do that anymore. I think that coming from a liar... That's about more honest than most people have ever gotten in their fucking lives. And I think that, you know, look, whether you wanted attention or not, uh, we do shit when we're looking for love. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if you didn't feel it at home, I did a lot of crazy shit for love. It really is the reason I'm funny. It really was the reason that I became a singer. It really was the reason that I went on American Idol. It really was. I just needed somebody to be like, I love you. And I... That got me in a lot of trouble. Yeah, it also got me in a lot of trouble. It makes people around you like, and I think that they can see that shit in us just enough that we're a threat, and they get scared to see somebody come from where they came from, but go do more. Yeah, and to do it so honestly. Yeah, there's a I, there's a we're living in a world where I think a lot of people want to be life coaches. And I think a lot of people want to give advice on the internet. And a lot of people want to be like, let me share my experience. And and I feel like not everybody's meant to be a life coach. Just because you went through some shit yeah. doesn't mean you should be giving fucking advice, baby. Right. Just go heal and shut mm-hmm. the fuck yeah. up. Self-awareness and- is super important for coaching anybody through anything. Because if you can't acknowledge your own bullshit, how the fuck are you supposed to give other people advice about themselves? Like, you got to be honest with yourself first. Like, that, all those sayings about, like, it starts... With you, it does. Look at the fucking man in the mirror, because that's where you need to look. You remember the never-ending story? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to blow your fucking mind. Remember the part where he has to look in the mirror? Did you think that was the dumbest part of the whole movie? Yeah. I did. Yeah. I was like, this man just had to run through the big titty sphinxes shooting lasers out of their eyes, and he done lost his horse in the swamps of sadness, and now the hardest thing to do is look in this fucking mirror? That's bullshit. This is stupid. This was a cool movie until right now. That's the most important part of the movie because that is the hardest thing to do. Looking in that mirror, and there's so many lessons in that movie. It's like the swamps of sadness where he loses Artax. You got to get the life is the swamps of sadness. And if you let these negative thoughts and that sadness consume you, if you just let yourself keep thinking about that, sure, you're going to you're gonna keep sinking into those swamps of sadness. And that's what depression is. And you got to make a fucking effort. You got to decide, I'm not going to do this. It's not about mental health. It's about mental strength. I'm going to fucking do this. I'm going to get my fucking head out of my ass and I'm going to find the positive because there's so many people in this world that ain't got shit. And if you're riding a fucking bicycle down the road envious of somebody in a car driving down the road there's somebody that's in a fucking wheelchair wishing that they had the legs to pedal that fucking bicycle so just be grateful for the shit you have and that's what's going to push you to the next level you know just like sinking into those swamps of sadness ain't going to do anything but fuck you up more yeah i love that i first of all i just love you so much i feel like i didn't know what to expect when i met you but i'm like so obsessed with you and your mindset and it really does mean so much i'm also obsessed with your new wife oh she's amazing and she's so so, i love watching you on social media she's really just i think had her own story which is so wild with her own health and watching her uh how does it feel to be newlyweds with your dream girl never thought that i would get married ever like my never no my friends like if you took like my five closest friends before any of this happened and said how much money are you willing to bet? Like, I'm going to, here's $10,000. Are you willing to bet $10,000 that Jesse will never get married? And they would have taken that bet like that. Every single one of them. Like, oh, this is a bet, $10,000 that Jesse will never get married? They give me my money. Um, so this is very unexpected. I love it so much. For me and everybody else. And, and I told her, it's, <laughs> I told her I didn't believe in marriage. I told her it was just a more expensive breakup. Like, you just want, you want our breakup to be more expensive? No, pass. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she actually, we had a conversation uh, in the very beginning of our whole story, and she told me she had a dream. She said, last night I dreamed that we were on a yacht, and we were sailing, and 
I don't know where we were going, but when we docked, I proposed to you. And then we went and got married. And I was like, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh. No. no. <laughs> but uh, it, she's so loving. Like, it, the very moment that I was in her presence for the first time, like, I could feel, like, Jenna Jameson became the fucking monster that she became like and i mean that in a good way like my baby's a beast like yes, she's an incredible yes. businesswoman she's so intelligent um she became that beast um rightfully fucking so because her energy is so powerful like the very second that i got in the car when she picked me up from the airport i was just like i it was it hit me like i could feel it i could feel the energy and i was like fuck this is gonna be a problem in like the best way possible. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, of I course. I feel like she makes my heart beat fast. Well, you've come, you've you're married, and she lived in Vegas. Mm-hmm. So you've left Alabama, Florida, and you live in Vegas now. We just moved back to Vegas. How are you feeling with Vegas? I like Vegas. There's a, I've met some really really cool people. I've uh, encountered a lot of an, of opportunity. I've got to hang out some really cool influencers. And I feel like Vegas would love you. You're totally up Vegas's alley. I like it. You know, um, if there's a little bit more humidity, uh, <laughs> for not we were living. Saying, but, before we turn the cameras on, I said, "How are you doing?" And she goes, "Okay, wow, well, there's no fucking." I humidity. feel like I live in a food dehydrator. <laughs> <laughs> It, like, I mean, let's be real. I was in Florida for 22 years. That's the vagina of America. All right. <laughs> this is the moistest place <laughs> on the continent. And I just moved to Grandpa's Dusty Elbow. It is fucking rough out here. Listen to me. Like, fuck Florida, like though. If, if fucking beef jerky was a climate, that's what fucking Vegas <laughs> is, dog. Listen, though, fuck Florida, because I did a lesbian event, and I swear to God, I was, like, looking hot. I had my spray tan, my hair blown out. I was, like, ready to show up for the girls. And I fucking stepped outside, and my spray tan melted off. My hair went curly, and I was like, fuck this place. I'm not singing. Oh. It was so hot. <laughs> I mean, I did sing, of course, but yeah, the humidity thick. is wild. Yeah, that humidity But it's got to be dry for you. I'm sure it is. Mm, it is super dry out here. I feel like I'm turning into a fucking lizard, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so happy that you came on, and um, I, I really am. I mean this, like, not in a condescending way. I'm so um, honored to get to know more about you because it really is just so you get to know people how you show yourselves and you do have this huge audience, but you really have done so much. I mean, really, the pageants is what threw me the most. <laughs> I, I think that was the most exciting thing I saw. Um, I feel like I'm one of the most powerful manifestors I've ever met. Like, as soon as I figured this shit out, as soon as I was like, wait a minute, I just I just made that happen. I was like, oh, let's go, motherfucker. Uh, when I was in hair school, this is a fun story. I love to tell it. Tell me. When I was in hair school, I told everybody, now, they showed us, like, the hair shows and, like, all the illustrious careers of these incredible stylists. Like, uh, I look up to a lot of barbers, especially, like, Joe the Barber, Rob the Original. Uh, those guys are fucking amazing. Um, but I saw them on stage, and they're having fun. They're on stage. They're cutting hair. The music's loud. People are fist pumping. Like, they're showing off their skills to hundreds of people in the audience. And I was like, that's what I want to do. That's what the fuck I want to do. I want to do that. I can do that. I can do that. I'm watch me. Watch me. I'm gonna do it. I'm. And I told everybody at the school because we're all getting pumped up for this hair show. It's the premier show in Orlando. It's one of the biggest hair shows. I think it is the biggest hair show in the fucking country. And uh, we're all getting pumped up for this show. Our instructors are pumping up. They're like, you're gonna love the hair show. It is. It's really fucking wild. It's dope. I, uh, if you're a hair stylist out there, you've never been to a hair show, fucking make it happen. Hair shows are the best. They really, they really are. are. So I went to this hair show, and I told everybody before I went, I was like, I'm going to meet the right motherfuckers, and I'm going to shake the right hands, and I'm going to be a platform artist. And everybody thought I was fucking crazy. And I've had people like come back and be like, I remember you saying all that shit in hair school, and you did it, <laughs> you know? So I went to this hair show and uh, I met the right motherfuckers. I shook the right hands and I was on stage at that hair show. They pulled me up in front of the whole mother, like the, the whole motherfucking crowd. I'm in front of hundreds of people. I'm still, in, they're like, uh, Jesse, let's everybody welcome Jesse to this stage. Like, what? I'm like, <laughs> they're like, what, what salon are you coming from? Jesse? I was like, I'm still in hair school. <laughs> they were like, Oh, uh, 
And so uh, I, I had to pick my own model. I pulled my model up and um, I did a whole haircut, whole hair design in front of all these people, you know. And that's intimidating. That's the the lights are bright, they're hot. That stage is not what you're expecting, you know. Mm-hmm. And I got up there and I whooped its fucking ass. And they recruited me, and I was the next platform for Oster Professional. Oh and they sent my me, god! They sent me all their tools. So when I went back to school, I got this fucking email from from Oster, like Oster. It's a, huge, it's a big deal. It's a huge deal. It's a fucking big company. fucking deal. I get this email from Oster, and they're like, "Welcome to the team. You're Oster Professional's newest platform artist." Here's one of everything. Dude, and I that, had a those mountain. tools are so expensive. So expensive. So expensive. And I was broke as fuck selling weed back then just to pay my fucking bills. And they sent me one of everything. And I was like, let's fucking go. And uh, it, when I came off stage, before I knew that I was their newest platform artist, the uh, global artistic director, shout out Jay, Dave Green. I love you, man. That's the fucking godfather. He's a big part of me learning who I was as a barber. So uh, he handed me a tailor uh, and he said, here, get used to this. You'll be using it a lot. And then Fuck. I was traveling around the country doing hair on stage. And then I fucked up and got a little cocky. I came off stage and there was a group of girls. I Listen, I used, I loved girls. <laughs> I was <laughs> Well, you weren't married at the time. I was not you were doing your at thing. The time I, I did. I loved girls. And when I came off stage, they were like, oh, take pictures with us and stuff. And one of the execs was like, hey, flawless. Your job's not to take pictures. And I was like, oh, well, these ladies are interested in buying clippers. And as soon as we're done taking pictures, I'll be back there to sell your clippers. I can look back now and know that that wasn't the thing, the to, thing say to say. To I should have been like, head what I should have done is say, hey, ladies, I'm going to be right over here by in this booth. Uh, we can take some more pictures, but I got to get to work. Uh, meet me over there. You know, that would have been a lot smarter play. But I was like. Fucking, I don't know. I was like 25, 26 years old, and I was still immature. And it was a big thing, you know. I just came from just working behind a chair to now I'm performing in front of hundreds of people, and people want to take pictures of me, and they want me to sign their clippers and shit. And I'm like, what? This is it. I did it. Listen, nobody prepares you for that kind of fame. I didn't. Or even that kind of acknowledgement, especially yeah. coming from a place when you wanted it. I do have one question left that I do want to ask you. At Um, I think a lot of people talk about manifesting and I think a lot of people can manifest. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have a hard time holding on to it once they get it. Yeah. I know that for me, I've had to do a lot of work in being able to manifest what I want and then keeping the mentality that I still deserve it and I get to have it forever. I made a video about that just like a week or two ago. Oh my God. No, I didn't see it. Don't fuck up the life. Like when you finally get the life you've always wanted, don't fuck it up because you don't think you deserve it or some shit like that. Okay, so what is your advice on that? Because clearly your manifesting abilities are insane, but you're also able to hold on to what you manifest. Now I am. You know, I I had to, you know, I had to polish that part of the 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 situation as well, but Yeah. Um I force myself. Like it's I really strong arm myself into a lot of this because like I want to I'm I'm not like some fucking superhuman. I've just cracked the code. You know, I, I'm I can be mentally weak too, but I catch myself, I'm like, stop being a bitch. Stop doubting yourself. You gotta stop that. When I'm feeling sad, I literally go like watch puppies on TV. You gotta force yourself. You gotta make yourself stay in a positive mind frame. You've gotta convince yourself. You've gotta believe because it's all about you. It ain't about it don't fucking matter what they believe. It matters what you believe. It doesn't fucking matter what I believe. I mean, it's helpful when you got people around you supporting you and believing with you. Obviously, the more energy you can put towards something, the better. But it's all about you. You yeah. got you just you got to know that you wouldn't have gotten what you got if it wasn't supposed to. Are you stop doubting the fucking universe? That's disrespectful. Stop disrespecting the universe. It gave it to you, right? You think that? Do you think the universe made a mistake? So good. Jesse, I hope you come on any fucking time you I literally love you so oh, much. What sign so are much. you again? 
I'm a my um, <clears throat> my sign is danger. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm an Aquarius. And oh, I love Aquarius. Oh yeah, our birth. I'm a January. Are you January or February? February fifth. Uh, okay. Listen, I literally do love you so much. I was an absolute pleasure coming Whatever on here. Whatever you need, you have a homie and me in Vegas uh, and my you. fiance. You really are so lovely, and I I want you to have the best life. I mean, you know how to manifest it, but you do deserve it. And everything you said was so powerful today. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming I do on. My best. And I'll try to have some better water next time you do come on. <laughs> I'm gonna can, up your water. Can we get game. that fucking spring water? Uh, right. Can we go to Arrowhead some itself? Hack, some hack water. I'm working on it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring some alligator heads. That some was of that Arctic water yeah. from the glacier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to fucking Alaska. I'll grab you some water right, on my yeah. way back. Iceland, yeah. something like that. It's from a glacier. <laughs> Jesse, I love you. If people want more of you, they can uh, listen to Born Lawless. I'm bringing that back. I took a. A little hiatus, uh, lip, lip, I'm not going to talk shit about him, but one of the outlets to send my shit out to the people glitched on me. And um, I, honestly, I've just been lazy since then. I'm like, man, fuck it. It didn't work for a month. And then I got in that, I got out of it, you know, that headspace where I'm like all gung-ho. Let's invite people. Yeah, send, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get these guests on. And I'm about to bring it back. Good. Well, the people it need back. it. Yeah. They need it. Thank you so much, Justin. Give so my much, love Michaela. to Jenna. She's so sure. beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you. So Funny It Hurts is brought to you by Pacific West Injury Law. Got into an accident? Contact Pacific West Injury Law. Also, there's nothing better for your mental health than a great workout. And our episode is brought to you by Fit Club, the only place to be. It's so funny, it hurts.